Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. His mercy endures forever. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing you have made, and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson comes from Isaiah. Shout out. Do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me of righteous, righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast? But you do not see. Why humble ourselves? But you do not notice. Look, you serve your own interest on your fast day and oppose all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? It is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this fast that I choose to loose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? It is not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. And you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom will be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like the spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 103, verses 8 through 14. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, nor will he keep his anger forever. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. For he himself knows where we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, 
Now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, Will, will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not let be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head, Wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father, who is in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure, is, your treasure is, your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. The season of Lent begins today, Ash Wednesday. This can be a sacred time, 40 days to look deep inside ourselves, a time to look for those things in our lives that interfere with good relationship, and to identify those things in our lives that separate us from God, one another, and creation. This, is, this time of discernment is not easy. It can be painful to search for the truth of who we are. But this is a path to awareness that God inv invites each of us to take. Lent is that time 
to let go and liberate ourselves from our worries, our pain, excuses, and false images. If our sufferings, ego, and pain are not let go, they become who we are and what we pass on to those who are close to us and convey to this world. Letting go and forgiveness allows each of us to survive our hurts and pain and by trusting in the better reality of God's love. Lent becomes a time of true intention a time to arouse in ourselves a new heightened sensitivity to sin and guilt. It is a time to reawaken our gratitude for forgiveness, works of love and justice. Lent is the time to examine the spiritual workings that live within each of us. Unless we can acknowledge with gratitude the goodness that lives within us, we are not inspired to provide good works of love. And we cannot gain this sense of gratitude without forgiveness of sins. And we have no forgiveness of sins without recognizing sin as the source of our brokenness, guilt, and sorrow. We have no feelings of guilt without a sense of sin. Lent is that time to visit and befriend penitence and to find inside ourselves a humble sorrow. It is a time to crack open our complacency and confront the things and events in our lives and thoughts which enslave us. We live life heavy laden by our possessions, our self-interest, and our sufferings. Lent is that time to name them, count them, inventory them, so they can then be given to God and we can become empty again as our spirit becomes more open to grace than before we started our Lenten journey. In our Lenten journey, we carry our own heavy cross with Christ over the next 40 days as we walk with him towards Easter. Like Jesus, we cannot escape the cross of our own physical hardships or the weight of our troubled spirit. We can only try to understand and embrace the passion that Christ shares with us. If we are willing to carry our own cross freely and accept rather than deny our sufferings, our cross becomes holy. If we can let our hearts soften and see our burdens as forgivable and bearable, our sufferings just like Christ become consecrated, something life-giving. We are not saved from our sufferings, but our sufferings can lead us to goodness through the mercy of God. This goodness comes when we experience in our soul the one that has suffered with us and for us and loves us. If we love God and in so doing share God's love with others, our sufferings become life-giving once we have offered our true selves to God and God blesses us, redeems us, and lets unimportant things within our lives die. Through God's goodness and mercy, Christ will remain in our hearts as his spirit, which is greater than suffering and death. Lent is the time to focus on our heart's deepest longing, unity with Christ. 
It is here that we find our truest joy. In Lent, we can let go. In light, we can go with Christ into that time where we must decrease so Christ can increase and grow in our lives. By living our lives in Christ, we can lose our reliance on the world. Change the way we look at the world and how we choose to live out our faith economically, politically, and spiritually. Seeing and living through the eyes of Christ allows us to become more real and honest with ourselves, live more simply, and begin to work together more and begin to know ourselves as someone who can, in more genuine ways, share ourselves more, more fully with family, friends, and neighbors, and our God. During the next 40 days, let each of us go through this period of self-examination and in prayer work in an intentional way to become empty so we may become open and more vulnerable to God's will and God's love in our lives. Amen. Dear people of God, the first Christians observed with great devotion the days of our Lord's passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It was also a time when those who, because of notorious sins, had been separated from the body of the faithful, were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need which all Christians continually have to renew their repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now kneel before the Lord, our Maker and Redeemer. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, that we may remember that it is only by your gracious gift that we are given everlasting life through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Merciful Father, we confess to you and to one another and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, O Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways in our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, O Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy of those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, O Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, O Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, O Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts toward our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who are different from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Favorably hear us, for your mercy is great. Accomplish in us the work of your salvation, that we may show forth your glory in the world. By the cross and passion of your Son, our Lord, bring us with all your saints to the joy of his resurrection. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe his holy gospel. Therefore, we beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do on this day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
And now, friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Ascribe to the Lord the honor to his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts. Join me now in reciting Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And now some of our church's children will lead us in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. In union, O Lord, with faithful Eucharistic people throughout the world, we offer you our thanks and praise. We present to you our souls and bodies earnestly desiring that we may always be united with you. You promise, O Christ, to be present with us in the sacrament of your body and blood. So with confidence we claim your presence among us during this Eucharistic fast. Come into our hearts and unite us with you and one another. May your healing grace abound. Let nothing ever separate you from us. May we live in you and you live in us, both in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And now, together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love 
in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Bow down before the Lord. Grant, most merciful Lord, to your faithful people pardon and peace, that they may be cleansed from all their sins and serve you with a quiet mind, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ. Thanks be to God.